get going. Um, hello again and welcome everyone uh, to our fabulous freebies workshop. We typically do this workshop in person uh, and it's usually three hours so we're cutting it down to an hour and a half and in the interest of time we won't be showing everything we'll be talking about most of it and showing a little bit of it but we wanted to have a wide variety of options for you things that you can see and um, if you have questions please type them in the chat box we will be posting the handouts we have a copy of the powerpoint along with the resource sheet and we'll be posting that in the chat box in about 10 minutes if you want it emailed to you you're welcome to email either liz or myself and we'll put our email addresses up there or you can, if you feel comfortable, you can just type your email in the chat box. It's completely up to you. We do want to make sure you get the copies of the slides and the um, resource list because it's pretty extensive. Okay. So I'm Laura Martinez. I'm the Assistive Technology Program Manager at TASC. And I'm going to throw it over right now to the lovely Elizabeth Ortega, who is our assistive technology specialist. I want to make sure you guys know that everyone's mics are muted. Um, again, if you have questions, please type them in the chat. If it's regarding the material we're presenting, if it's regarding something totally different or you need specific uh, questions answered on a personal basis please go ahead and email us with those and again <clears throat> let us know if you're unable to download the handouts and we'll be glad to email them to you ready liz yes uh good morning and welcome to fabulous freebies no cost 18 and low cost adaptation ideas um task um, we're a nonprofit organization. We cover six counties in Southern California. We're a Parent Training Information Center and a Family Empowerment Center. Um, task. Our mission is to educate and empower people with disabilities and their families. And we help families understand the special education process by providing a variety of workshops, IEP consultations, resources, information about disability laws, rights, and responsibilities. Any questions or concerns you have regarding your child's education, you can call any of our offices. Our family support specialists will be able to help you if you're looking for something specific um, that one of our family support specialists cannot help you with. They will be able to refer you to someone who will. We also have the tech center. Our tech center is in our And within the tech center, we offer a variety of service, assistive technology services. We have different workshops. Um, one of the things that we offer are AT and AAC. AAC is Augmentative and Alternative Communication Consultations. That's through our Project Communicate program. We offer a free one hour AAC consultation with a speech language pathologist. Right now, she's currently doing them through the, over the phone or through Zoom. If you're interested in one of our consultation, AAC consultations, you can either email me or Laura and we'll get you started with that. Um, we also have Tech Connection as a social and life skills group. We meet the third Wednesday of the month from 4 to 5.30. And it's for ages 14 and above. Um, we have a lot of information and resources on assistive technology. Um, currently, during COVID-19, um, we are still offering most of our services. Everything's either by telephone, Zoom, or email. We do have a lot of resources. You can either visit our TASC website or our TASC Facebook page, or you can just email us directly if you're, something, if you're looking for something specific. We'll try to help you with that. We have tech. Tidbits, it's a free assistive technology focus e-newsletter that goes out once a month. If you would like to receive it, you can visit the website that's on here and you will have it on your handout. Um, plug in your email address and you'll start receiving the e-newsletter e the following month. 
doing yourself low tech for assistive technology. There's a lot of things that you can do with things that you have around your home. Here's one example of something you can easily do at home. Um, if you need your recipe book or book at eye level and hands free, you can use a hanger with the clips to hold your, your book. Um, car to, um, cardboard books for toddlers sometimes might be a little bit difficult for the toddlers to turn the pages on these books. Something that might help them is fluffing the books. And it's easy to adapt a book this way. And there's a variety. This one on here that you're looking at, it's a sponge, pieces of sponge squares with a paper clip and a paper, so you can clip it, paper clip it to each page individually, and then you can easily remove it. You can also add things that are more permanent with glue, glue stick, not glue stick, sorry, um, with a glue gun or just um, crazy glue. You can use tongue depressors, paper clips, binder clips, hair clips, glue dots, pom-poms, sponges. There's a variety of things that you can use. And here you can see the different examples that we have in our tech center of the books that we've adapted. If you use the tongue depressors or popsicle sticks, um, if you're also working on, on numbers, you can go ahead and add the page number to each stick. Uh, the first image on the top left corner, those are the eye contact um, cases. You can also adapt puzzles. Um, the puzzles for the younger kids, sometimes if they have the little pins, they're too tiny for them to grab and move the pieces, or they don't have anything to grab from. So you can adapt it with larger handles, um, add texture to the pieces. You can photocopy the puzzle to put it inside for pattern to follow. You can use Velcro or magnets, that's easier, in, it's easier for them to put and remove and also it helps them to stay in place. And different things that you can use to build your own handle is PVC pipes, empty thread spools, doorknobs, knobs, drawer pulls, buttons, velcro magnets. Here's <clears throat> a puzzle when the puzzle, when you purchase these types of puzzles that they don't have a visual reference for the student when they're building the puzzle, you can either, you can photocopy it so they could have it side to side or you could paste it to the actual car, to the car, to the puzzle piece on the bottom. Or this one right here, what we did um, was that it was trace each piece and added a number. So they could match numbers, match the shape, shape, you can also do letters or colors for the matching. If the students are having trouble holding cards, these are different ideas of things that you can use at home to hold cards. Ed card and hairbrush, um, chip clips, cloth, the clips for the clothes. Um, the pool noodle, we tried doing the pool noodle at work, but we bought the pool noodle from the Dollar Tree store, which was much thinner, a little bit flimsier. Um, so if you're going to do one of those, try to buy a more sturdy one so the carts are steady on the table and it doesn't tip over. A party ring mouse for the, for the mouse. For students who are learning how to use the mouse or for just individuals who have a hard time understanding the right click and the left click, if they're learning how to use the mouse, they might do the right click. When you do the right click, if you're on the Windows, Microsoft computer, um, you will get the box that pops up, which might get frustrating because they won't be able to exit if they don't know how to click out of it. So one thing that you can do for them to learn to left click, you can use those the party rings, the plastic rings, you can remove the top, sand it down, and then you glue it. So, they can, so they'll learn that the finger with the ring is the clicking finger.
a quick fix for finger isolation on the iPad. It, iPad or any tablet, if they put the entire hand on top of the screen of the tablet of the iPad, it's not going to make contact when they try to select with the finger because the rest of the hand is touching on the actual screen. So something that you can do is either use a stylus or what's pictured here, it's get a glove, cut off the part, the finger that they're going to use for the selecting. So now they can actually put the entire hand over the screen and it's only going to select with the finger that they're using. Um, quick and easy adaptations for dice rollers. If this individual is rolling dice and they're getting all over or they're having just trouble physically rolling a dice, um, these are the small um, Tupperware containers, clear little containers that you can purchase even at the Dollar Tree store, 99 cent store. Um, so they'll just shake and put the, the container down and that's their dice. Uh, adapted doorknobs, if they're having trouble getting a grip on turning the door to get the door open or um, to open the doors, these are foam tubing and we used it with a zip tie. So now they have a better grip and a better hold of the doorknob to easily open. Um, action figures. Sometimes it's difficult to hold an action figure for them to actually hold it and move it around. So this one has a shower curtain ring glued to the back. Um, if you have a lot of plastic gigs left over and you don't know what to do with them, these are different ideas of things that you can do with them. Um, if the student is working on mat of addition, um, you can do multiplication, subtraction. Um, if they're learning how to tell time, learning their lowercase from their uppercase letters, um, opposites, or working on specific words. So. These are just different things that you can do with the plastic eggs at home. Adapted writing. You can adapt paper. Um, sometimes students need to fill the paper where they're writing. There is race line paper, but it does get um, pricey after a while after purchasing, have, they're having to purchase so much of the race line paper. So something that you can do with the regular paper is adapt it to make it so the student can fill the race lines. So one of the things that you can use is the almost glue to trace each individual line. Um, do the wiki sticks. Wiki sticks are they look like small strings dipped in wax and you usually find those in the craft areas and those are, um, might be a little bit easier than the Elmo's glue. It all depends on the student's needs. With the wiki sticks, you can easily put it on the line and remove it and put it on the next one. The glue will be something more permanent. Or you can just simply highlight or bold each line individually. Um, adapting pencils. There's a lot of different ways to adapt pencils. Um, if the pencil is too thin and they need a bigger grip, you can use a sponge roller as a grip. You can also use Model Magic. With Model Magic, um, it's almost like clay, but it's much softer. You put it on the pencil, you make the, you shape it, you give it the shape, and then you just let it air dry for 24 hours, and it'll be there permanent on the pencil. Um, if they need a bigger grip, something bigger to hold a pencil, you can use a tennis ball, make a hole through the tennis ball, put the pencil through. So now they have a bigger grip of the pencil or pen. Use foam tubing, PVC pipes or tubes for holders, rubber band grips. Um, for adapting writing surfaces, you Sorry. can use, it's okay, um, slam boards. You can make a slam board from a three ring binder. Just, it's the one pictured on there. Um, and can you use rubber base shelf liners for stability on the bottom so it doesn't move? Another thing that you can use, it's a clipboard. You can add a, if you have a Pringles chips container, you could glue it to the back of the clipboard. So now you have a slanted done and it has the clip part of the clipboard to hold the paper down. Uh, these are different examples of adaptive pencils. The bottom left, the pencil with the rubber band, that's 
that helps the student um, keep the pencil in its place so it doesn't move all over the place. And also if you're using something like that and they're having trouble with holding the pencil, what you can do is give them something small, um, the top of a pen or a cotton ball, and teach them that with the, two, with the pinky and the ring finger, hold that item down. And when you have those two fingers down, your hand starts getting the shape of holding the pencil. Um, you also see the tennis ball in there, the bottom right, the crayon that has the model magic the sponge rollers, the paper clip. And you can make your own weighted pencil. Sometimes students <laughs> are either writing, pressing too hard when writing, or they're not pressing hard enough so the writing is too light. So they might need that extra heaviness. You can use rubber bands on each end with metal nuts. And you will add as many metal nuts as they need to feel the heaviness of the pencil. Um, specialized writing paper, there's a lot of different styles of writing paper. And these are the websites that you can visit to print your own. Download and print your own at home. Any questions regarding what I just covered? I forgot to mention our lovely receptionist Adriana is running the chat board. Adriana, do we have any questions this far? Is she muted? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we don't have any at the moment. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, I know Laura mentioned at the beginning, um, Adriana did send the handouts and the resource sheet through the chat. If you're not able to download them through there, if you don't see them, I believe if you're on an iPhone or a tablet, on your phone or a tablet, I don't, I don't think you can see those, hand, those downloads. Um, you can't email us, either Laura or myself, we will send them to you or just leave your email address on the chat and I would definitely email those handouts after the webinar. Yeah, we want to make sure you get them. Oh, this is me. Okay. So uh, a website I wanted to point out is called Zabrita Makes It Work. This is my friend, Zabrita Dunham. And she has arthrogryposis congenita, which means she can't use her hands very well. And so she has invented all of these really interesting workarounds for her own use for her own daily life. And when you go on the website, there are different videos where she's shown how she has adapted uh, simple things, but so that she can, you know, function in her everyday life. So I really encourage you when you have time to go visit Sabrina Makes It Work. <clears throat> I wanted to point out, I'm sure many of you know, but some people don't, that there are built-in accessibility features on every device, whether it's a computer, uh, Windows or Mac computer, whether it's an Android tablet or an iOS device. Um, there are all kinds of great built-in accessibility features on each device. And I just listed some of the different features so you can get an idea, but there are screen readers that will read text aloud. There's voice to text where you can speak and have the text print out for you. You can enlarge cursors or fonts. You can um, invert your text for high contrast, meaning maybe a black background with white writing to make it easier to see. You can, um, gosh, there's all kinds of things that you can do uh, to change things around. Uh, on your tablets, there's something called guided access where you can actually lock your child or your person uh, into a specific app and they can't get out without a password. There are color filters, which I'm going to show in a little bit. Um, all kinds of really great features. 
And I thought the best way to share this was basically to break it down. And so here are links to, that uh, you can go to to explore accessibility features on whatever your platform is. So Windows, Mac, Chromebooks, iPad, or Android. These websites here are really helpful accessibility tutorials that people have put together. Very comprehensive, step-by-step, -step, really, really helpful. I particularly love uh, Luis Perez. He has some really great uh, videos and his YouTube channel, um, he updates quite often. So next we're going to go to some free assistive downloads, which are software apps and extensions. Since everyone's on different platforms, it's hard to know what people are looking for. So we try to include a little bit of everything. Whoops. Sorry, my mouse button sticking. Um, just really quick, this is my Chrome, our Chrome 101 type to explain. Some people don't know what Chrome is. So many of you use the Google Chrome browser on your computers, which I do. Um, and in that Chrome browser, if you do a search, you'll have the Google search engine come up. But there's also Chrome operating system, which comes on Chrome book laptops. So um, we're going to be talking about Chrome extensions, which you use with your Chrome browser. And what an extension does is it adds a button to your browser bar. So basically when you download, can you guys see my mouse? Thumbs up if you can see my mouse. Okay, so it adds yes. these little, these little um, icons and then you click on them and whatever extension that you've um, put up will come up and help you. There are many, many extensions and I went ahead and just uh, included the link to the web store, but you can actually Google Google Chrome extensions and they'll pop up. There are so many. Or if you have questions on specific ones that we don't cover today, feel free to email me or Liz. So there, that's an extension. Then there's a Google Chrome app, which is like a program that opens in a separate tab when you click on an icon. And then there's also, if you use Google Docs, there are add-ons that you can download for Google Docs. So there's all kinds of great things that you can um, do with these. So I'm going to go on to reading supports, and we're going to be talking about all kinds of different things, again, that are free. <clears throat> so the first thing is color filters. I think Liz and I both use color filters on a daily basis. And basically what a color filter is, is on the left bottom side, I don't know if you can see very well, but basically there's a blue tinge that covers the whole desktop. And what that does, and you can change the color around, it makes it easier for a lot of people to read and you're not getting the glare of that bright white screen. So I have two on here, color filter and color veil that you can download for free and try. The iPad, if you have iOS 10 and up, has a built-in accessibility feature that has color filters that you can turn on and off, which are really helpful as well. And then Google Chrome has several. I included Screen Shader here uh, because it's one that I'm familiar with and one that I use. So check those out. They may be helpful, especially if you get migraines or have fatigue when you're reading or if you're on the computer all day like we are. Uh, next are free magnifier downloads. Again, I included some for the computer and then some for uh, one for Chrome, which is called magnifying glass. But um, there are also free magnification options built into Windows and Mac operating systems. Not to leave out apps, 
there are many, many magnifying apps. I included two that I use. Being over 40, all of a sudden your arm's not long enough when you go to read. You can't, you know, um, can't see. So I actually have big, big magnify on my iPhone and I use it when I'm trying to read very small print. And then there's another one called Supervision Plus Magnifier that works quite well as too. Uh, wanted to talk about some electronic book options. I'm sure you're familiar now with digital books, but I wanted to point out that there are so many available that can be helpful for someone who's uh, it's hard to read an actual paper book um, because you can't change it around or you can't hold it depending on what you need. I find digital books to be so much easier to read because I can adjust the font, I can adjust the background color, um, and then you can listen to them, hear, hear the text read aloud, as well as reading along. So. I just listed some Apple Books, which was formerly known as iBooks. Bookshare, if you're not familiar, basically you need a subscription to Bookshare, but Bookshare has um, textbooks, all kinds of books, basically, that you can download and they have a screen reader that they offer or you can download them into many, many different apps. And if you, you're interested in that for your child or yourself, you can go on and see what the qualifications are. But basically, in a nutshell, you have to have a, what they call a print disability. So that's a specific learning disability, a visual impairment, or you can have a physical disability to where you can't hold the books. But I encourage you to look, look at that if you don't already have that for your child. Uh, the other ones I listed are free apps that you can download. Learning Ally, you do need a subscription. That is more for um, books for pleasure, Harry Potter and Hunger Games and stuff like that. Volunteers go in and actually read the text aloud. So you, when you hear those audiobooks, you're hearing them with um, a human voice instead of a digitized voice. The other three on the right side, lit to go is a site where you can download free books. Overdrive, a lot of people don't know about Overdrive. You can download digital books from your local library and it's available on all platforms. Some libraries use a different app other than Overdrive, but they're all pretty simple. You can check out books in digital format, download them to whatever your favorite text-to-speech app or software is and use them there. And then finally, Project Gutenberg is um, free books that are in public domain. So older classics. So here are some examples of text-to-speech software that would read those books or read any text out loud that you need. On the software side, I listed Natural Reader and Read Please. For apps, Dolphin Easy Reader is a great free app, and I'm going to show you a video in just a second. Then there's Natural Reader Text to Speech, and then there are so many Chrome extensions, but Claro Speak is a really great one, as is the Natural Reader Text to Speech. So I'm going to warn you just in case, for whatever reason, when I play videos from my computer, you guys hear them loud, and I hear them very quietly. So just in case it's loud, just <laughs> Prepare yourself. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Is it going? There we go. Sorry about the delay. Yikes, sorry. 
It's thinking. Thinking, thinking. Remember to type your questions in the chat. And again, if you need a copy of the handout, let us know. I'm hoping this does not blow your ears out. Low vision, blind, How's the or volume? dyslexic? Access your favorite libraries with the free Easy Liz? Reader app. Browse for a new bestseller Fine. or find an old favorite. Follow along with perfectly synchronized text. It was the best time of day, the July sky cloudless. Change the text size, pick a color, add a highlight, or tweak the speed. The July sky cloudless, the slowly setting sun, a spotlight on the east. Get your newspapers delivered direct. Or copy and paste text from anywhere and Easy Reader will read it. Los Angeles is a sprawling Southern California city and the center of the nation's film and television industry. Download Easy Reader from the App Store now. Easy Reader, a better way to read. So Easy Reader is available on both iOS and Android platforms for free. Um, next is a website. You can also, there's also an app if you'd rather use the app called Newzella. I really love this website, so I'll try to explain it the best I can. What they have on here is text level reading. So there are news articles every day, whatever is going on currently, that have be, been rewritten in five different reading levels. And there are also um, nonfiction, um, like school texts and different things that you can look up and download. And what's nice is you uh, can get a free account. There's a pro account too, but um, we've been fine with the free one. Uh, basically, you can assign to your kiddos or to your students um, reading whatever uh, articles you want them to read, and you can set up uh, quizzes both on and offline, and you can even put in writing prompts or prompts for them to take notes. So it's really comprehensive, and again, it's all free. And the three... Um, boxes that you see to the right would be the same story, but just uh, written differently by reading level. So the bottom one's second, second grade, the middle one's fourth grade, and the top one is sixth grade. So really nice website, Newzella. This is a website called Rewordify. And what's nice about this is you can cut and paste text. I like to use Shakespeare, for example, because sometimes it's hard to understand or higher level text. You can cut and paste it in like I did on the yellow box here. And what it does is it um, takes some of the tougher words and changes those. It rewordifies them um, into simpler words. So up top, I have just returned from a visit to my landlord, the solitary, oh, I can't see, solitary neighbor. And so they said single slash alone neighbor. And so it just um, simplifies the text, makes it easier to digest and easier to um, understand. Here are two online tools that are text summarization tools. So what they do is take a long article or a long book or whatever it is that you want. Um, I usually do it by paragraph, but you cut and paste. And in Text Compactor, you can choose how much, like if you want to cut it down to 50%, it cuts it down and just gives you the, gives you the goods, like an old Cliff's Notes type type thing. And then summarize this does uh, something similar. They're both free and they're online. <clears throat> so for computer access, there are all kinds of um, different things. I wanted to show you a couple cool 
three things. And number one is my favorite. And I know I have a friend online here that uses it as well. This is called the camera mouse. And all you need in order to use this is a camera, like I have a built-in built one on my laptop, um, and a computer. So basically, it's a program that enables you to control the mouse the pointer on your computer just by moving your head. So you can see this, this guy here has a green square. You can, when you calibrate it, you can put it to one eye. I like to do it in the middle so that wherever I move my head, that's where the cursor moves. And basically when you download this software, um, this now becomes your mouse, mouse pointer and they have settings within camera mouse where you can turn on a dwell feature. And if I turn on dwell for three seconds, when I land my mouse on something and I stay there for three seconds, it will press and select that. I hope that makes sense. Um, it's really neat. It's fun to try. There is a learning curve um, trying to control things with your head, but we've had a lot of success with people using this. I included some mouse training and practice websites. Because we're in the swiping age, a lot of kiddos, you can hand a phone or an iPad to most two-year-olds and they start swiping away. But a lot of us, a lot of kids have not developed those mouse skills where they have to learn to click and drag you know, using the mouse. And some people don't understand the concept of I'm moving the mouse here and it's making something move up here. So these have some different tutorials where you play a game to learn those mouse skills. Here are some keyboarding sites. Um, if you try these and you need more, email me. I have a huge list. But these are all um, really fun typing games to help you learn keyboarding. Or at least if even if you, you know, your goal is not to learn keyboarding. If you learn the QWERTY keyboard layout, it's a lot more helpful for some people so that they can at least do the hunting and pecking <laughs> uh, easier. This is a website that's been around for a long time. They have really cute switch videos. You can download to your computer, or you can use them online. Um, I was going to play one, but they come out really loud and we cannot adjust the volume for whatever reason. But I encourage you to go on, they're very cute. And it's for someone who um, either needs practice using a switch or touch screen targeting practice. Okay, next we're going to go to communication and picture symbols. Laura? Yep. There are a few questions. Okay. Um, are there any that. adaptations available on the Amazon Fire tablet? I do not know Amazon at all, but if you email they, me. They do have accessibilities? Yeah. There, there is. And if you email me, I'll find you the correct link to go to for, are you talking about accessibility features? Well, it says adaptations available on the Amazon Fire tablet. So if you email with specifically what you're looking for, I'd be glad to help you. Okay. And I know some people cannot see the downloads. Um, if you are on the phone or a tablet iPad, you will not be able to see those through the chat. You can either email myself or Laura or send us your email address on the chat and we'll send them out to you right after the webinar. The other question is, are the links curated? Do users need to subscribe to any of the links or are open to anyone? I guess I don't understand the question. They're just free links. Yes. Um, if some, you might have to subscribe, but it's all free. Yeah, everything we're talking about is free today. Yeah, okay, that's <clears throat> it. Some of them, if they have a price, that's for the full version. So like something that we showed earlier, like maybe one of the reading apps, 
there's a free version with certain features and then the full version, the paid version might have added features. And again, if you're looking for something specific, please email us. I'd be happy to help you. Any more? That's it? Okay. That's it. Okay. So next I'm going to go to communication picture symbols. I wanted to share some that are free that you, that you can use online or download to your computer. This is one of my favorites. It's um, connectability.ca, but CA stands for Canada. So some of their uh, monies and things look different <laughs> when you're doing uh, pictures, but I just wanted to show you. They have a free visuals engine. They also have just tons of great resources on this website, but they have a free visuals engine. Hopefully it will open and not take years. And with this visuals engine, you can either use their pictures, which I'll show you, or you can download your own. So you can use um, pictures of family members or pictures of actual items. Maybe um, your child or your student associates, um, you know, being thirsty or having a drink with a specific cup. You can take a picture of that cup and put it in. So can you guys see that now? Yes. Okay. So here's some visual uh, support templates that you can use. And then they also have resources and ideas or uh, tips on different ways to use it. Just in the interest of time, I just want to show you how um, easy this is. So whatever template you choose, you just click add. And there are picture symbols. And actual photos, or you can go to upload and you can upload images from your computer. So, if I wanted to give some sort of a snack choice, oops, sorry, and you can do a search. And you can type in, oops, if you can type. And then when you're done, you can either print it or save a PDF and then print it later or use it online. And what's nice about this is you can type it in in any language. And you can use any object that you want. So this is a nice visual support. Uh, website. So that's the connectability.ca. Here are some different sites for free picture symbols. Um, they're all very different depending on what you're looking for. Most of them you can access online. There are a couple that you can download the symbol sets directly to your computer. The pictures on the right are all the same symbol. I mean, all different symbols for the same word. Uh, anybody, can anybody guess what the word is? Someone guessed hungry? Yep, hungry. That's it. So just different ways. Just really quick, speaking of that, I don't know if you guys attended our um, Let's Talk Low Tech AAC webinar, but we'll be doing part two here in a couple weeks. So if you're interested, let, let us know and we'll send you the uh, registration information. So here are some AAC applications that are free or that have light versions. Uh, on the Apple iPad side, Avaz is a great app. We have the full version because unfortunately with the light version, 
I think it only speaks for so many days and then it goes silent. Um, Go Talk Now, we use a lot. The light version, you're able to create, is it five pages? Liz? Five pages uh, of your own, whatever you want to put in. It's, it's a wonderful app. And then Verbally is a text-based app for someone who's literate and does not need uh, pictures. And then on the Android side, we have Let Me Talk. And I went ahead and put in what their available platforms are. Uh, we have Nikki Talk and we have Jab Talk. Again, if you're looking for something specific, go ahead and email us and we'll try to help you out. There's a question about connect connectability. Um, will the connectability work for a visual schedule for toddlers with special needs? Well, I would think so. I don't know the specifics about your toddler, but there's all kinds of different um, things on the website. Again, it's free, so you can just go on there. And there are tips at the bottom that will kind of tell you how to make a visual schedule on what it would be good for. But I would say yes, absolutely. But if you're looking for specific visual schedules that are paid, paid I'd be glad to help you with that, too. Um, she said that she has 10 toddlers, and she's an EHS teacher. Thank you. Oh, okay, yeah, definitely email me, and I can send you some ideas. I love toddlers. Okay, on to early learning. I think that's you, hon. Okay. Early learning, ABCYA, ABC YA, great website, has a lot of free educational games. They all range from K, I believe they have pre-K as well, up to fifth grade. Um, you can choose by subject or you can choose by grade level. And they also have a lot of apps available, very similar to their educational games on the website, but the apps are not free but everything on their website is free. They do have a subscription base on the, on the website, but I believe it's to remove the ads. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So if you don't mind the ads. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a pretty good website. Um, DuckDuckMoose apps has a lot of free apps. Um, there with Khan Academy. A variety of apps for the iOS devices. I have a little bit over 20 apps. They do have them available for Androids at the Google Play Store. And I believe it's 10 to 12 apps that they have for Androids. Um, Laura's going to show you one of the apps. Laura's going to try. <laughs> Oh gosh, I hope it's not loud. Tell me if it is and I'll turn it down. Gotta love YouTube. You know, when we try and test this out, it all works perfectly. Duck, duck, moose. <laughs> Duck, duck, moose reading. That's the volume. Introducing okay. Milo the Meerkat and his sidekick Puffs. Help Milo learn to read with activities that show the relationships between letters and their sounds. Practice letter sounds with consonant vowel consonant words. Learn the letter sounds for consonants, short vowels, and long vowels. Keep track of student progress on the parent reporting screen. Duck Duck Moose Reading is based on the Common Core Standards 
and was developed with an educator from the Stanford School of Education. Hooray! You did it! Duck Duck Moose Reading Phonics and Fun for Everyone So that was Duck Duck Moose Reading and they have a lot of wonderful apps. And lots for preschool and toddlers. Uh, early learning. Yeah. Um, free early education <clears throat> apps for iOS and Androids. Um, there's Fisher Price Laugh and Learn um, apps. They have different storybooks. They have animal sounds, count, counting shapes, and many other free titles. Um, there's also the Lego Jupiter apps and Originator apps. Originator apps has a variety of apps. Um, there's Endless Numbers, Endless Readers, Endless Wordplay, and Laura's going to show Endless Reader. Yeah. Endless Reader. Cross your fingers. They could at least show cool previews or something. Away. Back. Ball. A. L. Ball! Can, 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 can. Ball, 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 ball. Ball. So what other originator apps do, um, they teach the new, the word that you choose to start with. Um, it, they put it in a sentence. They give the, most of them gives the definition of the meaning of the word. And then they show a small clip that shows the meaning of the word. So they'll show a small clip of the sentence that they just built. They're really fun. Um, math supports. There's Math Playground. <clears throat> has a variety of math um, educational games. Um, one of the things that's one of the major things that sticks out with this specific website is that it has math problems. It's not easy to find um, soft um, websites or apps that offer math problems, and this is one of the ones that does. It also has worksheets, manipulatives, um, flashcards, and math videos. Academic Skill Builders, another free website that has educational math games. And this one's research-based and standard-aligned educational games, all with math. And you choose the uh, the area in math that the student needs to work in. Khan Academy, great website and app, all free. Their library has over 4,000 videos, um, math, finance, history, uh, a lot of practice. And if, you're, if the student is going to be going back and forth between an iPad tablet and the website, you might want to create them a, a sorry, you might want to cre create a sign-in for them. That way it will link between the iPad tablet and the website wherever they left off at, at the end. It also has um, test prep. And they've recently, also one more thing, they, um, Khan Academy has recently been offering 30-minute um, webinars. So you might want to check their website um, for any upcoming webinars. Yeah, they've been really good. And I just wanted to just clarify that even if you create an account, it's all still free. Yeah, everything's free. <clears throat> Let's 
um, free math apps. There's an IXL math practice available for iOS, Android, Kindle Fire. There's PhotoMath. PhotoMath is the one pictured on the top that has a 2x plus 3 equals 10. Um, the student can either take a picture of the math problem on the book hand um, worksheet or if they write it out themselves. It then solves it for them and it gives them the steps of solving the problem. There's mathbyateacher.com and there's also total math practice available for iOS and Android. Has a variety of early learning math for the younger students. And that one has a free, but there's also um, a subscription-based part to it. The free one only gives you access to certain levels on each um, subject that you choose within the math app. There's still a lot, I think. Yes, yes. So any questions up to this point? No, we haven't ha had any. Okay. Well, I don't know if that's good or bad, but we'll move on. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take over here on multiple subject and miscellaneous. <clears throat> the first site that I want to share with you is a free learning style survey. Um, so people can either be auditory, visual, or kinesthetic, which means hands-on learners. There's a lot of other things that go into it, but many times, um, children rely on, a, or people, people in general, rely on a specific way of learning that they learn best. So someone who is visual and needs to see the print and the instructions and things like that, if they're listening to just straight lecture, they're probably not going to digest everything that they need to, and vice versa. The thing is, all teachers or most teachers, I can't say all teachers because a lot of our great special ed teachers are um, teaching multiple modalities, but a lot of teachers teach in their own learning style and don't always take in the person they're teaching to account. So when we do our uh, in-person trainings, we try to do auditory, visual, and then a lot of hands-on to pass things around, let people try things out so that we can get all of those things. So um, on this free website, you go on in and you fill out a questionnaire. You can help your child do it, or I encourage you to do it yourself, and find out what your learning style is. So um, you might come back as, you know, 70% visual and, you know, a little bit auditory and a little bit kinesthetic. But what it does is once you um, figure out what the learning style is, then it gives you tips and pointers on um, how you might learn best or how what might help you with study. Okay, next is Turtle Diary. It's a website that goes from toddler, it has toddler section preschool and then K through five. And you can look up games by subject or by topic. And then they have different worksheets that you can download on various topics. And I love their teaching videos. They have some really cute videos. So again, it's all free. Learning Games for Kids. This site has, I, I put tons because there's just so many things on this uh, website that you can navigate through. But there are games, videos, and different lessons on all these different topics, math, spelling, vocab, health, geography. Um, there are typing games. There are um, games to help with logic and memory. Just tons and tons of great uh, games and different, again, videos and lessons. That's learning games for kids. GCF Learn Free has long been one of our favorite websites. It's a personal favorite of mine. What I love about this is, um, and GCF is the Goodwill Community Foundation, um, they have 
lessons on just about any topic you could possibly think of. And I don't know if you can see to the right here, but uh, in the picture, but there are even lessons on everyday life, like grocery shopping, using a microwave, um, using an ATM machine, just fantastic. I'm going to try opening the website just so you can see how many lessons there are on there. I'm going to tell you one negative about it is that they're, all of their lessons are flash based. And if I don't know if you're familiar, but flash doesn't typically work on any iOS <laughs> devices, only on like a Windows based thing. I clicked on it, it's not opening. I don't know whether to click it again or not. Let's see. Um, anyway, the lessons are flash based and we hear flash is going to go away here soon. So I'm not sure what they're going to do, but I hope they come up with a, um, a good solution so they don't lose. The lessons are older. Some of the animations are a little on the hokey side but we use them for our Tech Connection program and for, I've used it for myself to learn subjects. Okay, it's starting to load up. So just, this is all the topics, but I just want you to get an idea of how many different things that they offer. So everything from computer basics to career planning, there's help with, um, filling out job applications, writing resumes. You can even practice interviewing skills, um, learning, you know, different types of um, office skills, money basics, just um, learning different languages, technologies, Chromebook, iPad, iPhone. I just wanted you guys to see how much. Hopefully I'm not making you see sick, sick by scrolling. But there are so many wonderful topics. And whoops, sorry, that was probably ugly. Sorry. Um, in everyday life, there are some great activities that we have used over and over. Food and cooking, there's different tutorials on, you know, using different measurements and reading recipes and doing that kind of stuff. Um, around town, there's reading maps, taking buses, reading a bus schedule. There's um, money, under money, there's some great ones. Um, anyway, there's one where you go grocery shopping and you have a list and you have to go to the right section of the store and get exactly what's on the list and then it crosses it off and then at the end you go and pay and you review your receipt. Lots of those skills that aren't always taught. Anyway, great website. Some other educational sites I put up, some that we use, again, didn't know what you guys were looking for. AAA Math and AAA Spelling, great websites. Kids World Fun, lots of fun things to do. My educational. Uh, Starfall is great for younger children. There's one that states of the U.S. that works on geography. And then yourdictionary.com is super helpful. Wanted to mention a couple of um, apps that are available through Model Me Kids. One is called Model Me Going Places, and it's basically social stories or social videos. Things like getting a haircut, going to a restaurant, um, things that we can't do right now, uh, going to the doctor, things like that. And then Autism Emotion works on different emotions. There's um, different games and just working on those kinds of skills. Couple of life skills apps for our older students or depending on what you're looking for. Complete Laundry Care. This is an amazing app. It tells you how to sort laundry. 
it has a timer. So if you put laundry in and you're like me and you forget and leave your laundry in the washer, you can actually set a timer to come back uh, to remember to put it in the dryer. And there's a guide that shows what the little symbols on your clothing tags mean, like don't bleach, don't iron, hang dry, things like that. And then the free uh, photo cookbook app. So this has a free section and then there are in-app purchases. But basically it's a, a photo step-by-step -step cookbook. Some of the recipes are a little strange, but um, there are different sections that you can download um, for a small fee. Nice visual directions, though, for our non-readers, or those that need visual supports. So we're at almost to the end, and I'd like to ask you to please fill out your workshop evaluation form so that we can keep doing these. And all webinar evaluations will be put in a drawing for a $25 gift card, but you have to be sure to include your contact information. So I'm going to have Adriana cut and paste, or Liz, cut and paste the link into the chat box. But if you have your iPhone and you have a um, camera, all you have to do is turn your camera on on your phone and hold it up to this uh, QR code here. It will take you directly to our SurveyMonkey link where you can fill out, I don't know if you can see it, where you can fill out the registration form. I mean the evaluation form. Um, I'm going to leave this up. And if you have questions, please put them in the chat or please email us. Liz or somebody, whoever's doing the, <coughs> uh, the uploads, if you can just upload the handout it's, I, one more time. Oh, I, I shared the link for the survey for the evaluation. Mm -hmm. um, I've had a few questions regarding the part one for Let's Talk Low Tech. Mm -hmm. um, it was recorded. It will be available on our YouTube channel soon. An email will go really out soon. once once all those recorded webinars are available. Um, mm -hmm. Part two will be on May 27th. It's the um, Let's talk low tech to AAC thinking outside of the box. You can visit our website. It's already on our calendar for you to register if you would like to attend. Please do. And yes, we do offer parents one on one assistance. Um, you can either contact Laura or myself. I'm sharing the slides with um, you, our students parents. You can share our research sheet with the parents. Um, are there any resources to get free or cheap affordable tablets? We have families who need some for telehealth therapies or distance learning. That's not really our area. Again, if you want to email, we can see what we can do, but only things that have directly to do with this webinar. Um, I don't know, that's not my area. The only thing I know about is voice options. And that's for augmentative communication only. What about you, Liz? Don't know of any. I'm trying to think. Email us and I'll see what I can find. But honestly, off the top of my head, I don't know of any. For families or for schools? For families, I believe. No. Yeah. Um, will you, um, question is, um, will you have a seminar geared toward older kids, middle school? We have several. We have 14 different workshops that we do. So yeah, eventually we'll have all different ones. This is just a mixture of the free things we found. But yeah, we have our apps for older students. It's not scheduled. 
adapta adaptations for teens and young adults too? Adaptations for what? Can you have her email us please or have them email us please? Okay. Our email addresses are here on the, the last slide. You can email myself, I'm Laura, or you can email Liz with questions pertaining to, you know, personal questions, things that you want for yourself. Are there resources for teaching social skills and emotional regulation for children and autism spectrum? Um, other father, father verbal and non nonverbal. Yeah, that again would be something that you would email us with. Because I need to know more. There are all kinds of great resources. Um, adaptations, adaptation webinars are similar, but gear for caregivers with ED teens. Adaptations for ED, I would need to know more specifics. Again, Liz, that would be an email. Any more questions pertaining to the webinar from today? If, again, if you would please fill out your um, evaluation form, we'll go ahead and put you in a drawing, but you have to put in your contact information so that we know it was you. And then the next webinar will be in two weeks. Is it the 22nd? 27th. 27th, huh? And we can... Um, there's one more question that fire? to the resource sheet. It says, did I understand correctly, the resource sheet may be shared with family slash coworkers, but not the slides. If so, will the slides be posted to the task website? No, we don't share the slides. We just share them with the participants. That's it. So you'll either get them through email if you ask for them, or we put them in the chat. You got the slides up, Liz? Okay, I think we're good. I'm going to tell, tell everybody goodbye. Hi, I see Vince. Um, nice to see you. <laughs> and thank you all for attending. And again, if you have questions, please email us.